Have you ever pondered how a beautiful country can transform into a horrific killing field within a span of just 100 days? Welcome to the land of a thousand hills, Rwanda, a place of breathtaking landscapes, vibrant culture, and resilient people. But beneath this picturesque facade lies a chilling tale of humanity at its darkest. In 1994, Rwanda was the stage of one of the most brutal genocides in recent history. It was a conflict between the Hutus and Tutsis that resulted in the massacre of hundreds of thousands of innocent lives in a mere 100 days, a timeline that is as shocking as it is tragic. In this exploration, we'll be taking a deep dive into the origins of this ethnic conflict, the key figures who played pivotal roles, the international response or lack thereof, and the long-lasting effects that still echo today. Join us as we delve into the timeline of this heart-wrenching event in history. What could possibly spark such a horrifying act of violence? To understand this, we must journey back in time to the colonial period. The Belgian colonizers, seeking to control Rwanda, created ethnic divisions between Hutus and Tutsis, two groups that had previously coexisted peacefully. The Belgians favored the Tutsis, giving them access to education, power, and privilege, while the Hutus were marginalized. Post-independence, the tables turned. The Hutus, now in power, began a campaign of retribution against the Tutsis. This period saw the rise of Hutu nationalism, accompanied by a pervasive propaganda machine that painted Tutsis as enemies of the nation. The tensions simmered, creating a volatile environment, a ticking time bomb, Couple this with economic struggles and political instability, and the seeds of hatred were sown deep within the fabric of Rwandan society. The stage was set for a catastrophic conflict, but no one could predict the scale of the disaster that was about to unfold. On April 7, 1994, Rwanda descended into darkness. This was the day when the simmering tensions between the ethnic Hutu and Tutsi communities exploded into a horrifying spectacle of violence. The fuse was lit by the sudden assassination of President Juvenal Habyarimana, a Hutu, whose plane was shot down under mysterious circumstances. This event was the spark that ignited the genocide. Almost instantaneously, the country was thrown into chaos. The media, notably the infamous radio television Libre de Mil Colin, played a chilling role in fueling the violence. This radio station and others like it became the voice of hate broadcasting vile propaganda, dehumanizing the Tutsi population, and even providing explicit instructions on where to find and kill them. Meanwhile, extremist Hutu militias, known as the inter Ahamwe, began a systematic campaign of murder. Armed with machetes, and driven by a blinding hatred, they embarked on a house-to-house -house rampage, slaughtering Tutsis and moderate Hutus who dared to oppose them. The killing was relentless, the brutality unimaginable. The international community watched in shock, but their response was marked by hesitation and inaction. Despite the pleas of desperate aid workers and the United Nations' own peacekeepers on the ground, the world seemed to turn a blind eye. The United Nations Security Council, paralyzed by indecision, failed to reinforce its under-resourced mission in Rwanda. The cries for help were met with silence. It was a period of unimaginable horror, a time when humanity seemed to lose its way. In just 100 days, an estimated 800,000 Tutsis and moderate Hutus were massacred. It was a genocide executed with chilling efficiency, a testament to the destructive power of hate. In just 100 days, Rwanda had been irrevocably scarred, and the world left reeling. The land of a thousand hills was now a land of a million ghosts, a haunting reminder of man's capacity for cruelty. The Rwandan genocide, a dark chapter in human history, remains a painful lesson about the consequences of indifference and the urgent need for global solidarity in the face of mass atrocities. When the killing stopped, the world was left to grapple with the aftermath. The Rwandan genocide led to an immense refugee crisis, with millions displaced, fleeing the horror they had witnessed and the retribution they feared. The international community responded, with the United Nations establishing the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, aiming to bring the orchestrators of this atrocity to justice. 
In the face of such devastation, Rwanda embarked on a path of recovery and reconciliation. The government initiated a series of national unity and reconciliation programs, encouraging dialogue and understanding between the Hutus and the Tutsis. It was a journey filled with pain, but also with hope. Amidst the rubble of their past, Rwanda began to rebuild, with an unwavering commitment to a future defined not by ethnic division, but by unity and peace. Rwanda's journey of healing is a testament to humanity's resilience in the face of unthinkable horror. Over two decades later, the Rwandan genocide still holds crucial lessons for us all. It's a stark reminder of the depths of inhumanity, a testament to the power of fear and hatred. But it's also a beacon of hope, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the capacity for reconciliation. Remembering this tragedy isn't just about honoring the lives lost. It's about understanding the factors that led to such an atrocity, the signs that were ignored, the voices that were silenced. It's about learning from the past to safeguard the future. There are numerous organizations at the forefront of this mission. Some work towards preserving the memory of the genocide, others focus on supporting survivors and their families. Many strive to educate about the dangers of ethnic hatred and the importance of tolerance. Now, armed with knowledge and understanding, we urge you to take action, support these organizations, educate others, and together we can ensure that such horrors are confined to the pages of history. Before we end this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button for more deep dives into history. But before we conclude, let's take a moment to contemplate the power of individual actions. Each and every one of us holds the capacity to make a difference. Remember, it was individual actions that led to the horrors of the Rwandan genocide. But, it was also individual actions that sparked the process of healing and reconciliation. It's easy to feel powerless, to think that our actions can't possibly affect the grand scheme of things. But history shows us otherwise. It shows us that the seeds of change are often sown by ordinary people, people who choose to stand against hatred, people who choose to speak up when others are silenced. So, we urge you to remember, to learn, and most importantly, to act. Stand against intolerance, educate others, support organizations that are working towards peace and reconciliation. Your actions matter, they can shape the world. Thank you for watching and supporting our channel.